Welcome back to Quantify Your Career. And today, let's talk about seven most important types of optimization methods that are used in quantitative finance. Let's keep it simple and explain everything in plain language. And we'll get into details in later videos. So this is an introduction to the different optimization types and their applications in finance. So first is linear programming. Let's say you need to solve a problem where everything is straightforward and adds up in a straight line. So there's one goal, like minimizing the cost or maximizing a value and a bunch of limits or rules that are also just simple additions. And these are called constraints. So for example, you're picking ingredients for a recipe. You want to make it as cheap as possible, but it has to meet certain nutritional values. So all the costs and nutrients add up linearly. That is linear programming. You give the computer all the ingredients, prices, and nutrition rules, and it finds the cheapest combination that still meets your goals. Quadratic programming. Now imagine you still want to optimize something, but it's not just a straight line anymore. There's a curve involved. Think of this like balancing two goals. You want high return, but also low risk. Risk in many models grows like a curve, not a straight line. So now your problem becomes a mix of straight lines, like budget limits, and curved ones, like minimizing risk. Quadratic programming helps you to find the best balance between two things and sometimes fight against each other. So there is something like a trade-off. Second order cone programming. Now this one sounds complicated, but it's not. Let's say you want to control how big or spread out something is like keeping the overall risk or error below a certain threshold. It's like setting a radius limit. Stay inside this round boundary. If your rule says the total deviation must stay below this level, then you're drawing a round fence instead of a straight one. So SOCP handles that kind of curved limit while still keeping things fast to solve. Semi-definitive programming. Now suppose instead of picking numbers or weights, you're working with a table of relationships between things like a matrix. And you want to make sure that table behaves nicely, especially that it doesn't contain anything mathematically impossible like negative risk. So semi-definitive programming helps you fix or improve these tables, which are called matrices, by adjusting them just enough to make them mathematically sound. So in other words, Here's a messy table, please clean it, but don't change it too much. Now mixed linear programming. Some problems involve yes or no decisions. Should we include this item or not? Can we only buy whole units, not fractions? So let's say you want to pack five items into a bag, but you can only take two. Each item has a cost and a value. You cannot pick half of any item. So that makes it mixed integer problem. Some decisions are continuous, but others must be whole numbers. So this helps you search all combinations to find the best one. Dynamic programming. So what if you're making a series of decisions over time, not just one, like planning a trip with multiple stops, you want the best total plan, not just the best first move. So dynamic programming solves problems like this by working backward from the end. At every step, it looks ahead and says, what's the best move now, given what happens later? This is great when your decisions depend on future steps. Stochastic programming. Now let's say the future is uncertain and you have to plan for different possible outcomes. Imagine packing for a trip and you don't know the weather. So if you plan, if it rains, I'll wear this. If it is sunny, I'll wear that. You make a decision today and then you leave space to adjust depending on what happens. So stochastic programming does this with numbers. It looks at all possible outcomes, assigns a probability to each, and helps you choose the best overall plan. Now, what if you don't want to rely on probabilities at all? You just want a plan that works no matter what happens, even in the worst case. Robust optimization helps you prepare for the unknown. It says, I don't care exactly what the future looks like, just give me a solution that always works, even in the worst scenario. 
So think of it like carrying both sunscreen and an umbrella just in case. So a short recap of all of these optimization problems. If your problem is simple and linear, you use linear programming. If there is a curve or trade-off like risk versus return, use quadratic programming. If your limit is like round boundary, use second order cone programming. If you're working with tables or matrices and want to fix them, use semi-definitive programming. If you have a yes, no, or whole number decisions, use mixed integer programming. If your problem is step-by-step -step over time, use dynamic programming. If there are different possible futures and you want the best plan on average, use stochastic programming. And if you want to be safe no matter what, use robust optimization. Let's talk about each of those optimizations again, but looking at it from a finance application perspective. So linear programming, which is straight line planning. So linear programming handles problems where the goal and every rule are straight line additions, like filling a shopping cart, each item has a price, each has nutrients, and you want the cheapest list that still hits every nu nutrient target. In finance, you can think of cash flow matching. You tell the solver the exact liabilities you must pay each year and the prices of bonds you can buy. It picks the cheapest bond mix that covers every payment. So this could be a pr linear programming problem, the cash flow matching. Quadratic programming or balancing two forces keeps the straight line rules but adds one curved piece, usually a risk term that grows like a bowl, not linearly. Imagine two goals that pull in different directions. More return is good, but more variance is bad. So the solver slides to the spot where the upward push from the risk exactly meets the forward pull of return. This is mean variance portfolio design. You find the portfolio with the lowest variance for a chosen level of expected return. Now, second order cone programming, stay inside the round fence. Sometimes your rule is a radius limit. So the total tracking error must stay below 3%, for example. Now that radius is a Euclidean length and draws a round cone around your feasible points. Second order cone programming solves problems that mix those round fence limits with ordinary straight line limits. A common example is building a portfolio which maximizes return while keeping tracking error or volatility under a hard cap. Semi-definitive programming or fix the whole table. Now imagine you have a whole table of numbers, a covariance matrix, and you discover it is mathematically broken because one direction shows negative risk. So semi-definitive programming lets you nudge that matrix just enough to make it fully risk positive everywhere. And the result is a clean covariance matrix that you can safely use in risk models or portfolio construction. Mixed integer programming, yes or no choices. So real portfolios are not always continuous. Maybe you must choose at most 20 stocks from a long list or buy shares in blocks of 100. So those yes or no and whole number decisions are integers. And the solver has to search combinations to find the best set. So mixed linear programming is the workhorse here. It finds, for example, the cheapest 20 stock subset that still tracks the full index closely. Now dynamic programming, where you can decide, observe, and repeat. So many problems unfold step by step. At each step, the best choice depends on what you will be allowed to do later. So dynamic programming tackles these time-linked decisions by working backward from the final step. A textbook example is the classic American option pricing. At every node in the lattice, you decide whether to exercise now or wait using the already calculated value of waiting one step. In stochastic and robust programming, which is planning for uncertain futures. So stochastic programming is for situations where you know a set of possible futures and their probabilities. You choose an action now then specifically follow up actions for each scenario. And the solver picks the plan that gives the best average outcome. So pension funds might use this framework to balance assets and liabilities across thousands of market scenarios. And robust optimization goes one step further. 
you ignore the probabilities and insist on a plan that works even in the worst possible case. You might sacrifice a little expected discomfort, but you can guarantee you are never caught unprepared. And in the next video, let's walk through each of these optimizations in detail. Until next time.